Yeah. You know, this is an era of spectacular progress, particularly in bringing the good things of life to more and more people. And from their talks was forged a map for the path to freedom, a compact for the future. For the future. For the future. A map for the path to freedom. Yoder, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing today? Good. Come on. Um, I'm excited because I get to talk to you about a number of things um, today regarding prophetic dreams, mm -hmm. night visions. I feel like there's so many things that subcategorize under the whole like the little two words prophetic dreams, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's a lot there. Um, but you were a friend mm -hmm. and a mother, I would say, um, a wildly successful mother as yeah. I was processing. Like, Thank you. How, um, how do I like introduce and communicate some of the extreme value that you bring to our community? Mm -hmm. Like just the fact that your kids love you and adore you and hang off you all the time, I mm -hmm. feel like is a massive value statement and proof that like, wow, like you're a phenomenal mom. It's a good reminder when I feel claustrophobic to think of it that way, when Amen. I'm being smothered by them. Yes. It's good. Yes. I can't wait to be smothered by children. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be a thing. We're, we're working on it. Yes. Um, you also lead worship at Jesus Culture. I love, um, uh -huh. I love doing BGV there. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, BGV is background vocals. Mm -hmm. We can make up some other fun. Some acronyms. other acronyms. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Um, you should tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about your journey and in getting, stepping into worship. Yeah. Um, Chad and I used to lead worship in a small church setting in Canada yeah. years ago and even more years ago in college campus setting. Um, and then definitely just started leading our kids into it in our home. Mm -hmm. Um, just with guitar or piano and, and just bringing, um, no matter what the day looked like, just trying to bring a song. Sometimes it looked really messy. Even the other night, actually, Chet just felt like God was saying, keep, keep pressing in with your family for worship, mm -hmm. no matter what it looks like. It doesn't yeah. always feel natural. Um, but definitely felt like there was always a pull on my heart that it was amazing to play in my home. It was amazing to, um, just do that with our family but there was something more and he actually visited me in the night season about it repeatedly and I just stewarded um, dreams about being on the worship team for a few years what a beautiful segue yes and wow. it, yes and just, I had no idea that that was actually part yeah. of a huge part of your journey it was, yes you were dreaming about it a ton yeah really specific dreams and oh just my gosh. just stewarding them just being patient with them there was nothing in the dreams that made me feel like I was supposed to make something happen, just trusting him yeah. to lead that into fruition when it was time. And, and it, and it did, did happen very naturally when it was time. So wow. I'm so thankful for that because it was so right. And the timing was so his wow. when, yeah, when it came to, came that's to incredible. Be. So I'm really, it's still very surreal and it's still, that's incredible. Yeah. So. Wow. That's amazing. Um, I almost don't even know where to start because um, I feel like the realm of the prophetic um, prophetic dreams, I mean, it's inherently biblical. I was doing some, some little bit of research, yeah. and I found out that over one-third of the entire Bible pertains or is related to a dream or a vision. Yes. One-third. Yeah. Which is also fascinating because we spend a third of our lives asleep. Right. So by the time we're sixty, we spend sixty. By the time we're sixty, we spend twenty years. Yeah. Like dreaming, you know, and I feel like we kind of just write off the night usually, right. you know, and we're like, oh well, like my experience with the Lord is during the day. Yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. um, like that is the, the the primary place that the Lord will speak, but. I just came to a place, and I'd love for you to speak to this a little bit, um, maybe even share some of your journey with even with the worship team, because that's a core part of who you are as as I know you as a friend. Mm -hmm. um, 
Like that's a prop. That's I, to me, it would feel like a very um, just a near and dear journey, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. But I just came to a place of I'm just not. I'm not gonna give away my nights anymore. Like I'm gonna. Like what if our nighttime could have more revelation than the day? Totally. Like why not? Yeah. Why not operate in that place of expectation with mm-hmm. the Lord? And I mean, the Bible is just chock full. Hopefully we'll get into some stuff, but um, why don't you tell me some of the significant, you don't have to talk about the worship stuff, but a couple significant dreams that stand out to you, like what what happened, what was the Lord saying? Okay. Um, Um, Just in general? Yeah. There's one actually I felt like I was supposed to open with, and so I I have it open here in my notebook. Um, When Kira was, our daughter was seven years old. Um, we were at a time in our lives where Chet and I were so um, insatiably hungry for the Lord that we, um, at that time, this is this happened before, but we took our kids um, 24 hours or over 2,000 miles on Amtrak all the way from Canada to um, Vacaville, where we went to see Heidi Baker and Georgian yeah. and Winnie Banov, and that was just a, an incredibly awakening time in our Christian lives. Um, so that's where we feel like so much happened in mm. our revival season in our hearts of our family. Wow. And right before that happened, Kara was seven years old and, um, we hadn't talked a lot to our kids about having dreams at that point, but she came down to us in the night or in the morning and she was just coloring and doing whatever, just her normal breakfast routine. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden she she just kind of indicated that she'd had a dream. So she's seven. And I was like, oh, what was your dream about? And she said, oh, I I dreamed Jesus was in our house and he lit up the whole house. Yeah. And I I started to realize like there was something different here. And I was fascinated that I was going to be able to enter in for the first time of her explaining it. I felt really nervous, like, okay, how is she going to tell this authentically? So I just started to ask questions. I said, what, what was he like? And she said, his eyes were shiny light. Wow. And I said, what else? She said, his whole body was light. And I said, wow, like, how did you know this was Jesus? She said, his hair was brown. It was shorter than mine. And he had a crown on his head with jewels. And at that point, like our kids had seen Bible cartoons and different things, but they definitely sure. weren't going to like a, a children's um, church setting yeah. like they have a Jesus culture where they're being fed like totally the like the, the likelihood of Jesus, what he looks like. And um so this was very authentic. I asked her what room um, of the house was he in, and, and she said he was in every room of the whole house at the same time. Wow. Um, he was wearing that white thingy, she said, with a blue sash over his shoulder. And then that was it. She went back to coloring and wouldn't just wouldn't talk about it again. I mean, it was just as matter of fact as can be. And I, th- I feel like... She was seven. Seven. Yeah. And I had had many dreams in my childhood. Um, I was saved when I was um, a young child and went through a lot of night terrors in my home. And mm. and so I feel like when she had that dream and I yeah. my eyes were open that God had revealed himself to her at such a young time, there was a shift in our family where we started to be very expectant, asking the kids, you know, what they had wow. dreamed about, asking them. Now, and was then, it that point that really opened something up for your family? There was a shift. And I yeah. think also then I was able to look back in the past and be like, oh, wait. Oh, you put some of the pieces together yeah. type thing. Yeah. And um, this was before we'd even um, done training where we'd heard from Chris Valatin about yeah. asking your kids about dreams. And so it definitely was like very engaging for our mm. whole family. Um, and there was a shift. There was wow. an expectancy that came in. So that was a really marked season um, of many dreams. That's actually the first page of this dream book that's been filled, and I'm on to another one. Wow. That was in 2012. Um, yeah. So that's incredible. Really special. Um, this, I feel like there's a, there's this place with the Lord where it's it's like I feel like it should be normal to mm-hmm. experience the Lord at night in a way where we're like seeing with him, interacting with him. Like there's a number of, like, I know Graham Cook, he has consistent or like Bob Hartley is another prophet. They have consistent experiences and encounters with the Lord Jesus, Yeah, like where they will talk with him and receive Mm -hmm. answers to questions and dialogue and go on walks. I've had a couple dreams with Jesus, but 
I think one of the significant pieces here is like you um I feel like our we we consider dreams all that we write it off as oh that was just a kind of a you know a, a mental and imaginative right. thing that I just subconsciously you know thoughts running through my head and I wake up and it means something mm-hmm. But I feel like these are real encounters yeah. that were actually, you know, these are experiences that that yeah. we're having. Like you even look at Solomon in First Kings four, I believe it is, where he goes to sleep and the Lord comes to him in his sleep and asks him, um, like, "I'll give you anything. What do you want?" Yeah. And Solomon asks for a hearing. This is in his sleep. Solomon asks Mm -hmm. for a hearing ear. He asks for wisdom, but rightly translated, it's a hearing ear. Mm -hmm. And um, still in his sleep, the Lord says, because you've said, because you've asked for wisdom and not money or fill in the blank, I'm going to give you everything. Yeah. I'm going to make you ruler. Even like Abraham in Genesis 15, like... God made a covenant with Abraham in his sleep. Yeah. Like, uh, so I feel like there's a whole um, realm of in, of encounter. Yeah. Like we have encounters when we're awake with the Lord, but at the same time, I think there's, man, there's something to be said about what are the depths of encounter that we could experience? Totally with the Lord during, during our sleep, you know, real life changing experiences, not just mental ascent, you know, subconscious mental ascent almost, I Mm -hmm. think is a lot of the way Christians will look at dreams and even non-believers, like Mm -hmm. non-believers are dreaming. Pharaoh is dreaming. Yeah. Yeah, There's lots of Google um, searches on symbolism. Oh, hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. When, when do you think you, so you said you had night terrors Yeah. as a kid. Like horrific night terrors. Yeah. Which my parents weren't saved, so they didn't know what to do with that. Okay. I remember going to a psychologist when I was five, you know, and coloring and answering their questions. I mean, I mean, that was like a last kind of, it was an option that my parents were finally at that door going, we don't know what to do. She screams. She says she see, sees things. You know, wow. not understanding the spiritual warfare going on in our in our home, and uh-huh. um, so I think that to also it, it'll bring an interesting point that maybe we can touch on later too is is the difference between knowing this is like a quote unquote God dream mm. or maybe an attack, mm-hmm. and is that possible to have wow. a dream that's an attack as well? You know, because now wow. I feel like I can decipher it. Yeah. There's maybe a checklist that I can go through to, to decipher yeah. if this is an attack or if it's, you know. Yeah. Um, but back then I didn't have a grid for that and and so um I don't I don't remember a lot um until my parents were saved and then and then I, I don't remember much of an active dream life. Um I don't remember much of my dream life in, in my junior mm-hmm. high and high school years, but um definitely when I was a young adult and then more wow. so as a mother. So Wow. Um Let's talk about that because I, I think that's so significant for believers, non-believers alike. Is I think the enemy is freaked out by our callings. Yeah. Like there's something I think there's something in the spirit that we wear our calling around with us, even as little children. Like yeah. we, the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. I mm-hmm. believe it says in Romans, right? So we ha- we own that. Mm-hmm. Like that's not something we get later. Like anointing can come later, greater measures of Holy Spirit can come later. But I think as when we're kids, you know, we, there's something discernible in the spirit realm of, about, you know, what, what we're gifted in and supposed mm-hmm. to do with our lives. Yeah. And so even before we know the Lord, I think, you know, there, uh, one of my favorite things is that um, you know, the enemy doesn't counterfeit. Mm-mm. Or excuse me, he doesn't create yeah. anything. He right. just he only counterfeits. Mm-hmm. And so that being said, for every twisted counterfeit, there's a righteous reel. Yeah. So it's fascinating to me that me knowing you now as the prolific dreamer, like you're probably the most prolific dreamer I I know, and as my as a friend mm-hmm. currently, um, like weekly, nightly, 
just incredible, incredible stuff. And I've had seasons and it frustrates me that like, I don't know that I believe in seasons yeah, of like an interesting more. Mm -hmm. We could talk about that too, but yeah. I'm like looking, hearing that you had night terrors as a little girl is such, it's the enemy showing his cards to me, yeah. you know? Yeah. He's like freaked out by your life because this is going to be a contact point for Sherry and the Lord mm -hmm. for the rest. And she, she's going to tr change and transform stuff. And so oftentimes I think high level giftings are attacked as children. It's almost like you could look at what was the trauma in your childhood right. and then reverse engineer your calling. Yeah, that is interesting. I haven't actually, I haven't really thought about it that way. Isn't yeah. that fascinating? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't, I look even at my childhood and different areas of rejection, different mm -hmm. areas of um, learning disability, right. um, you know, uh, relational conflicts, um, these different things. And now I'm a pastor right? and I'm doing, and I'm, I'm teaching Yes, you know, where school was like, mm -hmm. I've actually had the Lord tell me like, you know, Curtis, the greatest injustice of your entire life was that you were expected to learn the way everyone else learned in yeah. public, public school system. Yeah. Um, because I'm just not a standard, like, visual, auditory learner. No. I'm a very different, like, I'm a do it, yes. feel it. S -s make, like, saw boards and frame houses yes. while you learn. Kind that's of true. That's, that's very the true. I know. There's a, yeah, yeah, there's definitely a carpenter, build it, make yeah. it awesome side there. Um, but, yeah, I see that in my life as well. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, let's talk a little bit about the attack thing. Yeah. Um, I don't have night terrors. It's pretty rare. I have a dream that's even considered what I would call bad anymore. Yeah. And if, if it has a negative or twisted slant, I almost always just wake up and, and claim the reverse, whatever the enemy is trying to bring a lie. Yeah. You know, whether I wake up and feel shame or guilt or feel dirty or anything like that, um, just declare the opposite. But I do still have um, this sort of like attack pattern of sorts that um, it's kind of interesting because I feel like there's a physical slant to why it happens and then there's a spiritual slant. I am really sensitive. I'm a sensitive person to too much stimulation. So in the day and age of an iPhone mm. and all that entails, which that for me, I only had my first iPhone about six years ago or maybe even five. So, or my Come first on. phone. Yeah. And I can mark some differences in my life that happened at that time that I wow. will constantly talk to my husband and be like, do you remember like 15 years back? Wow. Those issues were not in my life. So this brings me to a point, if I go to That's bed amazing. and I'm too stimulated from having checked texts or whatever it might be, I try to shut down um, social media, you know, a good hour or two before bed. If, but if there's something that's had me on there scanning for whatever mm. reason, um, I will find that if I'm going to have some sort of like attack thing, it always happens that night. So I've kind of picked up on it. At first, wow. I just felt like it was this attack. Yeah. And it's 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 terrifying for a minute. My heart feels like I'm having a heart attack. It, it yeah. happens very quickly, and I I, I feel like I see a, I literally see something a, a rushing at me. Um, but I'm able to go to sleep in the next second. Just able to look at it. It used to really rattle me, mm. and now I'm able to just, you know, just literally ignore it and go to sleep. But wow. I've also felt like there's been this personal responsibility over my night season that I've had to guard mm. a little bit. Yeah. Like hey. I'm maybe a little overstimulated, a little overtired. Um, I find yeah. there's a pattern there with that. So wow. <laughs> I don't know that I would label it, it's the enemy, or yeah, else yeah, it's yeah. also like, hey, did I really guard my night season? I'm entering a wow. whole, it's like half a day, right? It's like yeah. I'm entering this part of my day. Yeah. Have I stepped into it, you know, offering it to the Lord, just claiming his blessing of peace and sleep and rest? Wow. And I think you and I have talked about that before. Um, just like we have a, we have a holy responsibility to claim mm. our night mm -hmm. and our sleep. And mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's wow. just an interesting thought. That's really good. One of my, um, one of my favorite verses, I believe, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's either Psalm 2, 8 or Psalm 4, 8. Um, but it says, I will lie down and sleep in yeah. peace for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Yeah. Is that, do you remember the reference? Um, 
No. No. Close. There's another one, um, just that he gives sleep to his beloved. Yeah. That's been a huge one for my life. Yeah. So. Yeah. Claiming his. For sure. His sleep. When you do have a um, a heavy dream, mm-hmm. um, when you have a heavy dream that you don't, it's like you can. It almost feels like it's prophetic because it's detailed. Mm-hmm. Stuff happened. Yeah. Maybe you, maybe that could fall into the realm of a night terror. But what do you wh- what do you do with that? Like, do you think the enemy can throw dreams at us? I mean. Certainly, that dream that I may have just had, I can tell right away. If there's not, if that is not how God sees me or sets yeah. me up, then yeah. that was not from Him. There's for yeah. me, there's a clear cut. Yeah. So I'll often just walk the dream out in reverse, you know, like or the opposite. Mm-hmm. So I'm not that you person. Just flip it. I don't have that thought about that person, yeah. or I don't, I don't hide in deceit. That's not who I am, yeah. or I don't steal or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, and just flip it. Yeah. Declare it. Don't spend another second on it. Done. Totally. I mean, it's pretty black and white because, I mean, God's will is pretty clear. If you spend an hour reading the Bible through the New Testament alone, like you're going to get some good stuff about his heart toward us, I think. And it's going to be, it's going to be pretty clear. There's just so much going on in the night because I think on one hand, I think when we lie down, mm-hmm. quiet ourselves, I think there's an element, like if you take the the verse in uh, First Thessalonians, I believe it talks about the spirit, soul, and body. Mm-hmm. I don't actually fully agree with that model because mm-hmm. we've taken that verse, I think, a little bit out of context and said, like, there's we've... three compartments. We've put Greek mindset on it is it's mm-hmm. like... I, my body is one thing, and then right. very separately from my body mm-hmm. is my soul, and then very separately from my right. soul is my spirit, and it's as if they don't affect and impact each other, right. which in like Hebrew Jewish culture and thought, th- that wasn't a thing. Mm-hmm. It was, no, it's all one. Yeah. It's three in one. Totally. You know, and which is obviously how, how we see, would perceive the Trinity. So um, when I lay down at night, like one of the things that happens to me often is the in-between place of a sleep and awake. Yes. I, like, quick story. Um, this was probably a year and a half ago, to almost two years ago. I was having a nap in the middle of the day, which I don't nap a whole lot, um, but occasionally I will. Having a nap, and I I was in Oregon at the time. This was before I was married to Bethany. Mm-hmm. And um, had like a, I don't know, half an hour nap. And my nap wasn't super deep, so I was still kind of riding the line of yeah. fully uh, fully asleep. But it was really like it was a f- refreshing nap. And I heard an audible voice that if someone else was in the room, I don't know that they would have heard it. But to me, like asleep, I, it was f- coming from the outside. Right. of me. This yeah. audible yes. voice said mm-hmm. Sacramento. That's <laughs> all I heard. And I had sac and there's no I, we were in Oregon at this point. Right. I'd lived in Reading and done BSSM for 3 years and staff for 3 years and was like had no grid for Sacramento and that's where we are now. And right. it was after we got married. I, yeah, after we got married, we uh it was like all this favor. So it would have been a year later after that night in or the nap encounter. Yeah, that's I even know what you'd call it, but that's happened to me multiple mm-hmm. times of I'm I remember being on a plane going to South Africa for a ministry trip with Bethel and I was again in the in between place of asleep and awake. It's like two red eyes yeah, to get I to know, South Africa. Yeah. Have you been to South Africa? Uh, Ethiopia okay. and Australia. But, um, Pretty much the same thing. Well, uh, South Africa is, a, is another I step. I think it, it is the furthest <laughs> possible place it's, you can go from yeah. California. Like, I, I think Australia might be the same, but it's regardless. Yeah. Who knows? It's crazy. I, I actually timed it. Yeah. Like I did, I, you have a lot of time when you're traveling to South Africa from California. So I like calculated the travel, and from the time I left my house in the morning... Um, it was uh, 53 hours right. to the time we got to our destination. Yeah. 
53 hours is a long time to like not fully sleep. So I'm in that awkward place on the plane, one of the final planes. And um, I have this dream. I can't remember the exact details, but it was, um, I got the name of a ministry. I think it was like Hope Reformation Ministry. And then the name, I think it was like the name, um, like Sam or something. And... um, uh, and then I think another detail about a healing, like someone needed a healing yeah. if it was like a left yeah. elbow or something. I can't remember. And so I get we, the first meeting. We we were, we were doing crazy stuff. We we traveled for that fifty three hours straight into a conference. Of course, Sherry straight into a conference. I was mad. Whoa. I wasn't. I wasn't leading that trip. Well, I was. No, I wasn't leading at that at that time. This was in my second year. I was mad though. I was like, this is not healthy. No. This More is, convenient. but the Lord still moved. So I, yeah. we end up doing words of knowledge at the end and I give this word that I'd got and two, there was two women. I remember now it was two women and I, I had their name, both of their names and both of them, one had a like hope reformation ministry Wow. and the other was connected to one. It was two, it was a two for one. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Totally. And then there was a, a follow through thing with the healing as well, which was uh, incredible, but that in between place, yeah. um, I think, I think there's something that happens there where our soul gets really quiet. Yeah. There isn't the distractions of the mind, and it's mm-hmm. as if the Lord just has a full on. He just makes a beeline yeah. for our spirit, and yeah. I feel like He might have an ability just to communicate. S- more clearly yeah. have you ever experienced anything okay, like that so my in-between state is interesting i'm not much of a napper as well like but i'll have a restful weird thing where yeah. i'm in between where i'm riding that wave yeah um and what i get with that is he does this thing and kind of when i'm nearing the end of the nap where it almost does you know those kaleidoscopes the kids toys yeah, yeah. he does this kaleidoscope Oh and it's gosh. images, and then it and, and then it clarifies into one. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes a face, or it's sometimes an object. And it happens only during those nap in between phases. Wow. It doesn't happen at night. So um, that's really interesting. Sometimes I feel like he wants to be like, "Hey, you want to take some time with me? I have a gift for you." Wow! Like if you want to close your eyes and try it. You know, I I, I just feel like. Um, in our culture, we just don't rest enough. And so I feel yeah. like he really does want to give rest to his beloved. That's and he wants good. to show up and give gifts too, you know? Come on. To I, have those something, who want it. I have something to say about that. Do it. Um, Daniel, Daniel yeah. chapter two, King Nebuchadnezzar is going to slay everyone because he wants to know. Not only does he want his dream interpreted, that is really troubling him, but he wants the, his, you know, the magician or the Chaldean or the wise man of the time and is someone in his kingdom to tell him mm-hmm. what his dream is and then yeah. interpret it. So prophetically know right. what the dream is and then, and, and then interpret yeah. it. And he says, if you're not going to do this, I'm going to kill everyone. Mm-hmm. So there's a high level of motivation here. All the other people, all the other magicians and warlocks and the craziness of that time in Babylon are like, this is impossible. This is a issue for the gods and not a man is okay. what they say. And, it's fascinating me what happens because Daniel catches wind of this, goes and prays with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right. They, it says they prayed, and then he goes to sleep. Right. He, he literally goes no to sleep, there. and then it says in a, in a night vision, mm-hmm. which is, there's, you see these different, these different pieces and these different little, um, these different names for prophetic dreams in the word. Mm. Like I would say a night vision is different than a prophetic dream. Yeah. Like that's, it's different than a future oriented, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, maybe a directional future oriented mm-hmm. dream. Like there's night visions where this answer came to Daniel and he said he woke up and even before he like checked if it was right, he's rejoicing. Okay. He's going around telling everyone like, he, you know, he gets before Nebuchadnezzar and he's like, I got the interpretation, uh, it's sure, and it's right. And I mean, it's like he fully saw, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, I'm hungry for that. Like, what if we could get answers to King's problems? Totally. Like, specific, exact answers. Right. I just, I just love that. I want that. 
Right. So I was like, what are the steps to getting yeah. there? Is it, does it happen just one day? Does it happen after? I like, yeah. what, is it, what does it look like to steward dreams for other people? And, yeah. Um, you know, do you, steward dreams for other people. Tell me about that. Um, well, like. Like when you have a dream about for me, others. for example. Yeah, or, or yeah. for others. So know? that would almost be like, let's talk about that because. Yeah. Is there a. I would say that's almost like an intercession yeah. dream. Sure. A like strategy. Mm-hmm. Almost, almost a, like a discerning of spirits dream, you could say. Because I think discerning of spirits is a broad category that's just, you know, like there's a lot that would fall underneath right. that as well. Yeah. So do you have that a lot? Yeah. Or you... So there's, for me, there's a couple categories. There's sometimes an assignment. Sometimes it's a really vague assignment. I once huh. um, heard um, to guest in Ethiopia needs medicine. So yeah. I don't know a to guest in Ethiopia. I was a child. So that was an assignment. Yeah. I, I had no way to, I would know where she is. There's hundreds of thousands of tea guests in yep. Ethiopia. So assignment to pray, assignment to intercede on her behalf. Yeah. Um, but then if it's someone local, mm-hmm. one maybe someone in my community, my church community, mm-hmm. um, th- I've had dreams where um, maybe there's not a negative slant, but like, oh, this this wouldn't be fun for them. So that's not something I would share mm-hmm. with them and blab to them yep. right away, but I would certainly pray into it. And and then there's some fun ones that are usually very random and obscure mm-hmm. um, where you kind of just go for it and be courageous and be like, hey, had a random dream. You were here yep. and this person was doing this and well, there you go. Yep. And a lot of times they text back and are like, oh my goodness, that was super wow. confirming. And you're like, wow, that was really random on my end. So that's really cool that wow. God had that for you, you know? Wow. Um, I feel like there's a few different categories. And then there's then there's the ones maybe for yourself, like prophetically yeah. in the future, and you don't always share all yeah. of those either right away. You know, totally. you store them and totally. keep them close to your heart like Mary did. And um, That's good. Yeah. I feel like um, the night, the, there's the, I feel like the night vision is a significant one, which would also kind of go along with night, night encounter. Yeah. Where one of the things you see a lot in the word is angels showing up in dreams. Yeah. Now that's not metaphorical. Like when you read that in the Bible, you're not thinking, oh, like God sent, or no, no, no. you're like, oh, that person dreamed of a metaphorical angel no. that must mean something. No, they... He, Angels, Gabriel showed up to Joseph five times in the beginning of Matthew to give exact prophetic direction. That's the other thing is like, I'm excited to like open this up because it's such a significant part of New Testament Christianity. Like the dreams, the visions, like every significant decision in early church history was made because of a dream yeah because of a vision because of prophetic direction you know right yeah chet's um my husband's dad had such an encounter a true visitation of an angel uh, he was napping in the field during work he had been wrestling with his decision of whether to go to seminary or not okay and took a nap is this like back in the day is this years ago or 70s 70s uh yeah he said in the field was he a literally farmer yeah or? he was taking a break off the tractor he was doing oh work gosh. out there laid down in the field to take a nap and woke up to an angel conversing with him um so it was through impressions it wasn't they weren't speaking to each other they were understanding each other's thoughts um which i believe is shaba right wow. um and it's really fun because Chet's dad is so sweet and humble and he just doesn't, he just, he's just so, so humble and just um, really a, a righteous and loyal and faithful servant and this of was God. was totally out of his grid. Like, oh yeah, like we're he, talking teenager, um, wow. trying to make a very important decision with his life and the angel actually gave him direction towards that decision. He went to seminar and he's now doing um, wow. incredible deliverance ministry in the jails and he's just had... Just a beautiful journey. Um, wow, being a pastor. So there's wow. an inheritance that Chet has claimed yes. for him, yes. our family, our kids. Um, his mom has uh, just had a light over her bed mm-hmm. uh, in a time of um, loneliness when she just felt the comfort of 
you know, a blue orb. Like she saw light. it? Well, she saw the, there was a light. <laughs> there was a light. Yeah, coming yeah. down. So just so fun. That's incredible. You know, I, I actually walk around. I don't know if you do this. It's kind of weird, but yeah, sometimes yeah. do you ever look for them? Like I yes. look, like I look oh, for Oh, for the them. angels? Yeah. yeah. Like when, I, yep. Yeah. Go for it. I just, I don't know when it's going to happen or how, but I always look. Uh-huh. Keep my eyes open and watch for them because, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, is that selfish? I, I don't know. I want to see it. I want to, I want to see what they're doing. And, yes. you know, um, I'm already aware of what they're doing. I'm already um, declaring, yes. you know, that I want to see the angelic activity over my family and in my home. So, Come on. so I want to see it. That's really good. Yeah. I, um, oh man, we need to do a whole nother one on angels. Right. I'm oh, just getting sucked down the rabbit hole yes. right now. I Can I touch on the audible thing? You had that happen yeah, yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go once? for it. Twice? Um, the two times I've heard the audible voice of God have been in bed. Okay, yeah. One was I was fully awake but in bed and just laying down before right. I knew the Lord. Yeah. I heard the audible voice. and before then Before you heard the Lord. Wow. Yeah, it was before I knew the Lord. I was, I was drunk okay. on a cruise ship. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I wasn't... No, I was drunk earlier than that day. Right. And I wasn't like... I wasn't... I was in my right mind. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah, sure. And um, dead, dead quiet in a room um, on, a, on a cruise ship. And God said, leadership. I heard a man's voice say leadership to wow. me. And I was like, hmm? what is that? My dad was in the room, but he was dead asleep. I, I, I was like, dad, are you awake? And he said, and it wasn't my dad's voice. Like, I know my dad's voice, goodness yeah. gracious. But I, you know, it was as if someone on the other side of the room from my dad had spoken. So, you, yeah, you tell your, your well, story. Well, mine was really recent. Mine was within the last 18 months um, Come on. where I was sleeping peacefully, I might add. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, God, really? Like, I'm a mom of four. Mm. <laughs> like, I enjoy dreams, but like, mm. I was really sleeping. Yeah. And just like a shout, like somebody blasted in my ear. I heard my name, Sherry. And I literally sat up 90 degrees in bed. My heart was pounding and I was like, what? <gasps> what? And I heard it again, Sherry. And I was like, what? What's going on? You know? Oh my gosh. Chet's sleeping just out like a rock. Right. And Chet always wakes up if I have a night scare. Okay. And he always, so, so he puts a hand on me, he comforts yeah. me. So whatever was happening was just for me and him. Wow. The Lord. And I was like, what? You just like almost panic. And he was like, I just wanted to say, I love you. Shh, go to sleep. Oh my gosh. I didn't go to sleep. Are you kidding? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what time was what? it? Do you remember what time I it was? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> probably two, three. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so amazing. So that was my first time of that happening. And it was audible. audible. I mean, like, I mean it, somebody was shouting in my ear. Wow. It's I mean, like, it was, it's I, like I Samuel. Chad, it's just like that? Samuel. But he was having fun with me. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, oh, that's so he you too. thought it too. was hilarious. That's so <laughs> you because like you would do that to your kids right. and probably have. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. You would do that to your kids and that's exactly, yeah. oh, I love that. He has such a personality with us. And yes. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, I feel like another... Another category, I mean, there's just, just, there's so much that we could, you know, we could spend a whole podcast just doing Mm -hmm. on, on like dreams that pertain to intercession, but I feel like another one that's kind of maybe taboo or kind of weird is transportation. Right. Yeah. Like being taken places in the night. Yeah. Um, I, one of my favorite stories so if you just think about this really logically, we are a spirit. We are. We have a human spirit, which is cl- clear biblically. Um, and I would say we're more spirit than we are body mm-hmm. or we are soul because right. our spirit is eternal. Yeah. Like that thing doesn't really go away. It was, it was um, you know, before we were in our mother's womb, God knew us. Yeah. So there's something eternal about our spirit that I don't, I'm not saying I fully understand. And a lot of this, even this dialogue is mystery. That's a lot of, the best part. I feel like we need, we need to make that disclaimer of like, yeah, we're just like t- t- the tip of the iceberg on a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff. 
you know, and I'm not claiming to know and understand all the pieces, but when we talk about it, Mm -hmm. there is understanding that comes. I think freedom, people experience freedom. There will be an activation that happens, more happens, you know, so I just, it's just worth talking about, even though it's full, it's full of mystery and there's so much more, you know, that I'm not, we're not claiming to have the full understanding, but, Mm. um, you think about it logically, we're a, we have, I would say we are a spirit mm-hmm. currently in a body, mm-hmm. which is maybe a funny way of saying it, but that's, I think, the more eternal way of looking at mm-hmm. the reality of, you know, where we're at right now. Yeah. And there isn't really, like you look at Jesus being resurrected, raised from the dead. That guy walked through walls. He ascended. He, even when he, before he was raised, he moved through crowds, right. like huge crowds of people that were trying to throw him off a cri- cliff. It says yeah. Jesus hid himself and just miraculous. Did he hit people in the face? No. Like he, I think he, I don't know, dematerialized or something. I don't know. Okay. This is funny because we climbed Lover's Leap. Um, it's a, it's a hike in California yeah, yeah. the other day. And from their vantage point, I looked at Chet and I was like, you know when Jesus said he went away by himself? Yeah. Somehow I think he was here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking out over this. Don't tell me he didn't come to California. Okay? Come on. Seriously. Come he on. knew where to go. <laughs> yeah. That's real. So I, e- <laughs> you look at, I mean, even Matthew 4, um, where th- like Jesus is tempted in the wilderness and he goes up to right. see the... The, the kingdoms of the world. Yeah. You know, that's like a kind of demonic encounter, but there's a principle there that to- it, it was Jesus, yeah. you know? Like it's, it wasn't sin mm-hmm. because Jesus was sinless. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, just, he just did crazy stuff. Yeah. So all this is all set up for this story. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite testimonies about transportations, and this is, you can even look up, there's a couple times in Acts, Philip is transported from one yeah. place to another with the Ethiopian. Yeah. Um, so if this is weird, I would just say, go do some yeah. research, like look it up. Yeah. It's it's hidden in the word. Um, but one of my favorite stories, uh, BSSM. So my pastor, Ben Armstrong, mm-hmm. uh, in first year, when I was doing first year school of ministry at Bethel Church in Reading, um, that I was had graduated first year, was in second year, and so the year after uh, after me, the next incoming class of first year, there was a um, young girl. I can't remember her name. Young girl. They were get, getting ready um, to go on a missions trip to Mexico. I may have told you this story. I, I can't remember. I'm not trying so my fa- yet. There's so. so many elements to this that are like, oh, it'll preach for days, and it just exposes the mm-hmm. nature of who God is. They're getting ready. It's, you know, months before the trip to Mexico, the missions trip, because every year in April, BSSM does, just everyone's gone. Yeah. And they go all over the world yeah. type thing. This is the same context as South Africa, that story. Um, so they're doing a pre, uh, like a, a team meeting. They're doing a couple team meetings before they go, just get ready, get fired up, pray into it. Ben, the pastor, feels like, um, gods are going to re- start releasing dreams and like counsel in the night about the trip. So okay. the team, you know, receive it. Yep. That one of these girls immediately goes home and she starts dreaming of an orphanage. Hmm. Starts dreaming of an orphanage, dreaming of an or- orphanage. And the two months leading up to that trip, she nearly dreamed every night right. about the same orphanage and playing with kids hmm. and this, you know, this whole thing. And she's like, God, she had no idea what to do with it. She's like, I have no box for this. Like what, you know, what are you telling me to pray for an orphanage? She she didn't know what to do. They go on the trip, first day of the trip, where do they go? An orphanage. Show up in an orphanage and she doesn't really recognize a whole lot. Um, Or, you know, she'd never been there before. And immediately when they arrive, get out of the buses, the children surround her and are laughing and screaming and shouting and all this stuff. And they're like going crazy and she can't speak Spanish. So she's like, what's going on? They bring an interpreter over 
And the interpreter is like, these kids are saying they know you. They've been dreaming about her. They said, no, this you've is what the kids said. The, the kids said, you've, th- you've been playing with yeah. them every day for two months. Nearly every day. They know you really, really well. Chills. She didn't know them. But somehow, and here's my point, like, why wouldn't a really good God right. multiply missionaries and send people in the middle of the night to do stuff that, uh, of the ministry? So good. Like, it's just, it speaks to me of, like, there, there really is, like, when the angel said in Luke 2, I think, like, nothing is impossible for God. Right. Like, he really meant it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I think you can get into some weird stuff with, like, trying to go places. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. And I don't think, I think, I don't really see that in, in the word. No. Like, I think we need to be careful with that. And, like, I think when we're in Christ, the only place I want to go is I want to yeah. be in Christ. Yeah. And oh, then... Wow. I feel the presence of God on that. So good. The only place I want to be is in him. And then he does the rest. Like mm-hmm. he will take us and he will put us in the right in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever had anything happen happen like that. I've had a couple things, but yeah. nothing that I could definitively like prove. I, I have I'm friends with people who have had some radical transportation stuff happen. Um I guess before I knew it was a thing, I was picking up on. We talked about this the other day about daydreams. Mm. Okay, so what is that? Right. Is it okay. Is it bad? What's the what's the productivity of daydreams? What's, yes. Um, but I believe that you know when I'm doing things that are unto worship for Him, washing dishes, taking care of my kids, all of a sudden if I notice my mind is somewhere else, mm. um, that is where I will notice that I'm in a different place. Wow. And I and it, I don't usually notice it till after, and I'll be like, "Why was I all of a sudden leading worship at a jail in Africa? Whoa! Releasing words, you know? Wow. Why? What, what was the context? I had no grid. That's fascinating. Okay, so that that's happens. That's totally fascinating. That that's not just often. like, oh, you're thinking about what you're gonna, you're daydreaming about no. the lake you're gonna go to no, no, tomorrow. No, no, no. no, this is nothing you know? currently in my environment yeah almost or even like on your mind or or, almost on my mind yeah it's almost always something that which that i probably couldn't do right now while i'm homeschooling four kids you know what i mean but i'm but i see faces and i i see stories and yeah and i yeah and it's why not why like what is that is that a is that a homeschooling mom at home fantasizing about doing missionary? I don't think so. I, totally. I'll notice it after that it was in my mind, and I just feel like then I, I just, I don't even feel like I have to seal it. Yeah. You know, it's like I feel yeah. like the moment was what he wanted. It was releasing hope and For it was sure. releasing words to somebody. So For sure. I have never read a book on this. I don't know, totally. but it happens. Yeah, totally. That's amazing. Yeah. So. I think. Um, Yeah, the spirit realm is fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely fascinating because it's not restricted to to matter or distance. No time. There's mm-hmm. no, I think, you know, there's no distance in the spirit. You know, if, even if you think about it logically this way, if God is omnipresent right. and we're in him, then you could go weird with that again. Like everything that we're saying yeah. is you could take it too far mm-hmm. and get some really weird theology yeah. and make a whole doctrine out of it. And then yeah. all of a sudden, you know, you're just doing really, really strange stuff. But for right. the sake of love, you know, mm-hmm. for the sake of like God has a heart to leave the 99 and go after the one. Yeah. And I think he's just excited to empower us. Yeah. With you know counsel, he's excited mm-hmm. to give us strategies in the night. You know to yeah. give us one of my favorites. This is almost another category. I think is the category of counsel or wisdom, mm-hmm. because I think with one of the things Bob Hartley talks about, who's a pro- prophetic mm-hmm. guy out of IHOP, who I mentioned earlier, talks about for I think it was something crazy, Sherry, like nine years. He petitioned the Lord, prayed diligently, oh, God, I want to stand in your council chamber. Yeah. I want to go to your council chamber when I go to sleep. Yeah. And I can't remember the exact stuff he would pray, but it was along those lines. He talked about and, being at a table, too, mm, with him. Yes. Yeah. 
And now, and he goes all the time now, yeah. you know, and has w- wisdom and insight. But one of my favorites, one of my favorite stories is, um, and you see this in the word a lot as well, is dream interpretation in the dream. Yeah. Uh, it's the it's Daniel seven, I believe, where Daniel has that whole radical visitation about the future kingdoms and the you know all of these different the horn with other horns mm-hmm. and this very prophetic language and all this stuff. Then in the dream, an angel shows up and tells him, "This is what that all means." Right. And we think, I think our dream interpretation is in a box a little bit. Yeah. You know. Um, maybe we could talk about that a little bit as well. Like, what do you? What are s- some practical steps and things we can do to like grow an in interpretation? Yeah. But because um, there's a whole language of heaven yeah. there mm-hmm. that God speaks in parables, not necessarily in English. Yeah, you know, God, English isn't God's first language. Right. It's He's God, so mm. it's whatever He wants. Like how yeah. that angel communicated with with your father-in-law. Yeah, it was almost telepathic. It right. was not, it was communicated through spirit. Yeah, impressions in the spirit. Impressions yeah. Impressions of the mind, yeah. But dream interpretation in a dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't had an angel in the dream. Yes. Interpret, but I will often have the subject of my dream if it's somebody else that I'm okay. having the dream for. Yeah. They'll be like walking out the series or purpose of what it, whatever it is that yeah. they're maybe supposed to do or going to do. And then often they will emphatically declare this is to release this in this area. Wow. Or this will be to build this in this. So it's almost like the subject themselves will announce it. And then when I get to text Whoa. them later or something, I, I'd be like, hey, had this cool dream. Like you were saying this and it showed that you were doing this and... I don't know. That's really cool too. Wow. So I I've had this a couple times. Um, probably the most. So I have I've had a lot of dreams about China. Yeah. Um, and um, like specific specific things and people prophesying over me in my dream that I will do ministry in mm-hmm. China, mm-hmm. Um, or I will have, you know, it's specifically a university. That's one of the, one of the core dreams I had. Spiritual mother in my life showed up and said, I was gardening with her, you know, and, uh, it was Benny Johnson Hmm. from, from Bethel. And she was like, you're called to, to, um, minister at a university in China. Hmm. And I started weeping in the dream, Mm -hmm. weeping, weeping, weeping. A number of other things, I've had a couple other dreams and then some significant prophetic words just in the natural, just people giving them to me. So this, and this was uh, probably uh, five years ago when there was a lot of stuff happening and I've just kind of put it on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Um, I've just kind of shelved the China thing because I'm, one of the things I'm confident in with even with prophetic words and as things come is I'm like, I'm going to hold this in my heart. Like you said with Mary, I'm going to guard this. I'm not going to disregard it, but I also Mm -hmm. don't feel pressure to make it happen right now because I think the timing, the the Lord will, he will initiate and he will, he'll just make it clear when timing is supposed to happen and we're supposed to start moving the ball forward on different stuff. Cause there is a partnership on our end. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I, I was having these dreams about China and then it was a, like a year later and I have this dream that I won't go into the details because it would take too long, but I have this dream where Brian Johnson, another Bethel mm-hmm. guy, comes to me and he's talking about um, tigers. He's talking to me about, oh no, I'm sorry. He's, um, the Brian Johnson dream was the second one where the interpretation happened. The first one was I had this, I had this dream about tigers. It was just about tigers and there was, my family was involved. And then I'm like, what does tigers represent? Right. What, like, what, what is this? Because it wasn't necessarily bad in the dream. The Mm -hmm. tiger wasn't necessarily bad. Then I'm like, God, what is he? What are you saying? I have no idea what a tiger represents. Mm -hmm. You know, I have no idea what the interpretation. So the next night I have this dream where Brian Johnson is playing worship in my bedroom and he says, Tigers, he says this in my dream, tigers represent wells and springs. Wow. And I'm like, 
<laughs> okay. So I wake up. I'm like, that's fascinating. I still kind of don't know what it means. So I'm like, well, there's a like China and tigers. And then I'm like, well, I wonder if there's such a thing called, you know, to be honest, I don't even know if China was on my radar because it, this was a, it was like a year after all the China stuff was going down. And I, um, I Googled where we all go to our, you of know, course. to get prophetic interpretation. Yeah. I Googled tiger wells and tiger streams. The only place that came uh, came up on the planet was this university in China. Wow. That was in this the this central spot that was like called uh forgive me, I can't remember the exact name, but the university is called Tiger Springs, Tiger Wells. Yeah. And it's actually I did some research into it and it's the most pure water. This mountain that's mm-hmm. built around this this university is the most pure water in all of China yeah. that bubbles up from the, like the underground springs. I, and I don't, so I don't even know what to fully do with that. But all I'm saying is like dream interpretation in a dream is a thing yeah. biblically. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we can lean into that, yeah. you know. I, I think what you touched on about when the timing is right, I, th- I feel like um, I can say emphatically without a shadow of a doubt, he will tell you. He will make a way... Um, he did that for our family with coming to California. And one of the parts of our of, of that journey of us having stewarded words for years about California and starting to dip our feet in the sand a little bit was taking our family to California. Mm-hmm. We went to Bethel and we went up for prayer at the end of a service and somebody on their prayer team gave us a word that um, we didn't give them any background because, you know, everyone's mm-hmm. hoping, we're all hoping for some mm-hmm. sort of confirming word and his mm-hmm. his. His word was like, what you are waiting for and what you know is coming, he will make it clearer than clear. You will not have to second guess. Wow. And that was the cry of our heart as parents with four kids moving internationally. We didn't want to do it for any agenda except for his. So we didn't. We needed to know that when he made it happen, he'd be covering our family, he'd be covering our kids' hearts, wow. everything they were leaving, and he did that. So I just feel like... It's fun. I mean, I guess you have to ask yourself, what form of engagement do I have with that word? Yeah. Are you going to go to China one day and yeah. find a university and just put your feet in the sand and say, "Hey, God, wow, you'll show me when it's time." And wow. And uh, but I know, I know that He will make it clear. Mm. I feel like that a lot of people need to hear that. That mm. if there's something that they know they can't make happen on their own, but it is always, always on their heart, or it always keeps coming up in their radar, that mm-hmm. He will. He will let. He will make it clearer than clear. Yeah, he's kind that way. That's really good. So, he is. Yeah, yeah. He 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 doesn't need to. He, he doesn't need to have our comfort level always be, you know, perfectly mapped out. That's not on his radar. But he's kind and he's good. And, yeah. And he answers. He gives good answers to his children. And, um, yeah. Tell me another significant dream. Um, of of yeah. Sherry's history with God. Just one that keeps coming up in my mind here, and it's actually more recent, was this this our for, our first home that we just bought in California. Yeah, we'd been um, we'd moved here and been part of uh, Jesus culture for three years, and really um, starting to be curious if if we were going to purchase our first home here in California, mm. or if if we were going to continue renting and. So a really cool story is that I had this dream. In chronological order, I had a dream first, so I'll share the dream. In the dream, I I asked my earthly father, my dad, who lives in Canada, I asked him, I said, Dad, I want a house with a, um, not a timber frame, it was, uh, what do you call it? Um, Open frame? No, beam? It, yeah, it was a, a timber beam um, mm. kitchen. Mm. And I want it to be white, and wow. Um, and I want I just I want it to be yeah I want it to be a timber frame like it. And I saw it I saw it in my mind. And in the dream, my earthly dad, my dad, he said, "Well, of course I'll do that for you." And, yeah. And I said, "Really?" And he's like, "What wouldn't I do for my child?" So I woke up. Wow. Had no grid for it. Had no, yeah. we were still in a good renting situation. Yeah. We didn't know yet that the Lord was releasing us to buy. Um, technically, 
we didn't even know if my husband would, if we'd be able to buy yet because he's an, he works for himself as an independent contractor and you have to work for a certain amount of years to mm-hmm. be able to purchase a home and land. And so we were kind of around that deadline. But so after this dream, like months later, and I wrote it down, um, we get a notice from our landlords of our home that we have 30 days to vacate, um, that they're moving back in. You have four kids. Four kids. And, and that's that, not a yeah, small process. No, it's not. Um, yeah. We trusted that if this was happening, God was stirring something up. Mm. So we were like, okay, that's, God. Okay, that's very interesting because yeah. a lot of people would, their lens would be, this is an attack from the enemy. No. You know? No, we, so were, tell almost, me, we were almost giddy. That's amazing. Especially because the timeline wasn't even right. Like, I don't even know if that's legal. A lot of people just go honest, in, go like inward and like either what did I do wrong to cause this to happen or, you know, what's the right. devil doing and yeah. get all warfare and yeah. which, yeah, sometimes you need to get into some warfare stuff and yeah. bind some stuff and lose some right. stuff. But you just immediately, was that a conscious choice for you to go... It was a pretty natural choice. Like yeah. it didn't feel coincidental. I just don't believe in that anymore. God is too purposeful. I, wow. I just, I could see to the end of the 30 days and I was like, hey, we can always pitch a tent for a bit. Like I didn't, there wasn't a That's need awesome. to be worried. Yeah. I didn't know where we were going to go. <laughs> yeah. The Probably the most aggravating thing I'm really organized is I wanted to know how to pack. I was like, God. I need to know how to pack because if, if I need to get rid of my stuff, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Just give me a heads totally. up. Totally. Um, so oh so we have gosh. this 30 days and we have um, a pastor from JC call and say, I had this dream. In the dream, you were telling me, you're holding papers to a house you had bought and you were telling me excitedly, look what God did for us again. And that's amazing. So we were like, okay, God, there's a house for us. We're yes. actually buying. We can't hardly believe this. This is really incredible. Um, and we started to pull up a few homes online. Yeah. And I didn't really get involved with that process. I kind of told my husband, just you start looking. I, mm-hmm. I don't have much of a criteria that I'm concerned about. I just want it to be the one that God leads us to. Yes. So he starts going through property. And he kind of tells me about some of them. And he actually goes and sees a few of them, drives by. And I'm like, oh, it, you know, let me know when you feel like there's something on, yeah, on yeah, one yeah. of them. So we make an appointment with with um, a friend, a realtor from JC, and and see probably seven to nine properties. All of them were in and out in five minutes. Beautiful properties. Mm-hmm. Some of them had pools or just cool things that maybe we didn't expect that we could get in that price range. Mm. We had a very specific dollar amount we set. Mm-hmm. And we decided to stay very solid there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out of the properties. Even though our kids are whining, going, we love this. And we're like, it's not the one. Sorry, guys. Wow. Got to this other property that was a very modest house. Um, none of the bells and whistles in terms of landscaping. Very raw property. Mm-hmm. But it had, we walk into the house. And you would never guess this from the outside of the house. But it has a, it was the words, the words that... I heard in the dream were post and beam. We walk in and it has a post and beam kitchen. Now my family like builds... Like a post up and then... Post up and a beam and across. And a beam across the whole top. Yeah, I, my family builds homes in Canada. And when I think of beams throughout mm. a house, I think of a timber frame. And a timber frame house is built very specifically in custom mm. with beams throughout the whole house. Mm-hmm. But there was no other beams in this house except for in the kitchen. And it was all freshly white. And there was brand new cupboards that were white and the price tag was still hanging on them or the warranty tag. Mm. And I didn't even pick up on it then. I'd forgotten about the dream completely. But we couldn't get this property off of our head. We And our kids were like, are you kidding me? Do you remember the one with the pool back there? And we were like, this is it. Um, The price was above our mark. And we were like, this is the only one we're settling. Like we feel our spirits are yeah. actually like resonating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go home and my and my husband and I are processing on the couch that night. And he looks at me and he's like, Sherry, get your dream book. And I mm. ran upstairs and I brought down my dream book and he's like, You had a dream. He remembered. He remembered. I didn't. Oh my god. We gosh. looked it up and boom, there yeah. it was. You know, and that had been months before. And obviously, even in the dream, I really was thinking my earthly dad. Sometimes I forget the symbolism until yeah. later of the yeah. dream. But then I realized, like God was saying, what wouldn't I do? I actually realized I dreamed something I didn't even know I wanted. I didn't actually know I wanted a white kitchen. I've never really put a That's high value for incredible. specifics. I have a friend, a pastor, JC, who's always like, give me your specifics list. And I'm always like, I don't know. It'd be nice. 
happy kitchen. Yeah. You know? And I realized yeah. he had me dream specifics I didn't even realize I wanted. Come on. And we got the house yeah. for the exact dollar we had set beforehand. She, they came down in, in a price, agreed to the price that we were that we had set. We wouldn't go, up, you know, go above, and that's just really fun. I just released that word over anyone who's wanting a home or something to be that's confirmed awesome. that um, there was many other properties that might have even suited us better, but this yeah. was the one he led us to. Now, every time something happens with that property, or I have to be patient with something, I just mm. think, but this is the one he gave us, so it's the wow. perfect one. And what a confidence and a rest. So fun. That comes. Yeah. I was, I've been, uh, maybe a month ago reading Psalm 37, and I think it's verse four that says, he will give you the desire, delight yourself yeah. in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I actually felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, that's not just me giving you what you already want. That's me putting inside of you what you don't even know you want yet. Right. He will give you the desires of your heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, he'll put desire in you, even for the right things, right. you know, for stuff that we're designed for mm-hmm. that I think isn't even on our radar a lot of times. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. How are you doing on time? It's 5.56. Yeah. You can keep going for a little bit or a little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Yeah. When do you have to take off? Probably let's do another 15 minutes. That's great. That's okay. great. <laughs> I just want to keep going. Yeah. Forever, we might. We're gonna have to do this oh, again. This is fun. Um, I want to have as well. Like we could easily do another thing on dreams, but for sure, I want to have you and Chet on your yeah. your husband. Right, like I'm talking about some yes. cool dreams. My husband doesn't dream as frequently, but his dreams are oh, so. Oh, but when he symbolic. does, Come I on. just look at him and I'm like, what? Like very, very accurate guidance yeah. in his life. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, he's a doctor mm-hmm. and, uh, he's written some books and yeah. does amazing work. And you guys are like health, um, revolutionists. And I value that very much. I'm also yeah. on a bit of a physical yes. wellness, wholeness journey. I think when you get healthy in your body, it dramatically impacts and affects your spirit. Totally. And the same thing goes with your soul. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, there's a lot of overlap there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even what you're t- saying at the beginning with just stewarding Nighttime. the night. Yeah. That preparation time, that like um, getting quiet, yeah. getting still, not distracted. Yeah. So you're set up. Yeah. Bill Johnson, just real quick, Bill Johnson says, you know, the ba- uh, victory actually starts in the night. If you want yeah. victory for the day, it actually starts at night. Yeah. Bill has some amazing, an amazing sermon that comes to mind on that's on YouTube. Bethel yeah. Church sermon from probably 2014. Mm-hmm. People could could dig up. But what were you gonna say? Um, you were talking about preparing for the night. Chet has this funny thing. He will not go to sleep if his dream journal or or just his whatever it is his dream journal if it's not open with a pen laying on it Mm. so i will hear him in the night roll over in the dark and scratch it out so he has to write it down in the night i my i don't i always write it down in the morning and somehow i remember it he doesn't he has to get up and write it down so i just feel like he's being obedient in the way that he and god have worked out yeah yeah and um yeah. I think that's really interesting. So just he'll he'll prepare for his sleep by making sure his journal's right beside his bed. So that's also wow. something. Be if you are ready for dreams, ask the Lord. Like mm-hmm. ask the Lord for dreams and then start writing down things. And you yes. have to not laugh at you have to be okay with writing down weird stuff. That's good. Especially initially, I think. That's to good. pick up on that language. Yeah, you have no idea what it means. It feels like a pizza dream. Right. You know, it I feels don't like, that like term. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. let's Right before we should talk about that as well, because there's another side of like the is this just a soul dream, right? Or is this prophetic, or is this the Lord? And how do you tell the difference between yeah. the two? Is this just weirdness, or um, even our our soul or our emotions being processed during the night? That's yeah. like scientifically a thing. Yeah. Oh yes. Even. Dr. Caroline Leaf, guys, check out her podcast. And yeah. Her books. Like you got me onto that. Oh. oh my gosh, I got so blasted. Wow. Yeah. Um, but just. 
it's not it, it it's normal it's healthy it's yeah it's our it's our bodies resetting our minds resetting and it's yeah yeah it's good um on the like stewarding and writing it down like yeah. i will it takes me so long to write out dreams that i, I rarely will write them out unless i want to like kind of map them so that i can pull it apart and get interpretation that way like i'll sit down and write down the the significant pieces. That's something John Paul Jackson, Mm -hmm. um, amazing prophetic guy, Mm -hmm. has pioneered probably more in the realm of prophetic and interpretation um, in our age than anyone. Yeah. Um, Amazing guy. Just passed away. Uh, There's a lot of great resources online. Mm -hmm. So for people that are like interested in Mm -hmm. in more and more understanding and some really like practical stuff he has amazing resources but for me i'll I'll put my phone right by my bed i'll just have my phone i'll have it on airplane mode or whatever but i kind of don't like sleeping with my phone in the room but you voice memo i i'll voice memo it exactly and that is it's hilarious listening to my (laughs) My I've voice heard memos. One. I've heard of, one when you're like of my like full on asleep <laughs> groggy voice. It's hilarious listening to them, yeah. and I'm like not processing information fast at all, and I'm trying to find the language for a dream that wasn't in English. Right. So it's they're funny to listen to again, and then it but it'll trigger my memory, and yeah. it's easier than yeah scratching it out. I know in the middle of the night. But here's something fascinating: Thomas Edison. I I. You probably don't know this because this is a really weird fact. Thomas Edison um, would, um, he somehow figured out that the in-between place of asleep and awake was full and bursting with the seams of creativity and innovation and answers. Mm -hmm. Answers from where but heaven, right? And I don't even actually know if he was a believer. He very well could have been. I don't know. But he was known to um he would set a table in the middle of his like shop at work type thing and he would uh, lay down in the middle of the day and hold big ball bearings steel ball bearings in his hand and lay on his back in his in his uh shop and uh he'd hold the ball bearings in his hand so that the moment he fell asleep they would drop, they would drop to the ground and wake him up yeah. and he would get um like, and so he could remember what he was thinking about or the stuff that was coming to him the second before he fell asleep. True biohacker. Literally. <laughs> this is real. And he got, I can't remember the exact reference, but he got some sort of chemical equation, um, like just this exact, it was a formula, chemical formula for something mm-hmm. that was impossible to solve and he right. got this number sequence which is even i just remembered another detail he got this thing then f- um forgot half of it like he couldn't remember half of it and he was like no like i just had this and he went he did it again he went yeah. to sleep again drop the ball bearings and got it again like wow. the lord gave it to him again isn't that weird? Well, he pressed in. <laughs> he did. He certainly did. Wow. Oh, it it reminds me, I'm sure, of, um, like Chris Vallotton tells a story. Before he was a pastor, he was running, he was a mechanic. Yeah. yeah. All sorts of, you've probably heard this one, but mm-hmm. all sorts of um, uh, businesses, 76 stations in Weaverville, uh, California, and um he was having this big problem with all of his um, databases on his computers. He needed a whole different um, like coding system and a whole different like side to software that wasn't even, it wasn't available. He went to software people and they were like, that's impossible. You can't do that on your computer. I can't remember the exact, you know, what he, he needed, but it was regarding software and he needed a whole separate like category for logging auto parts or whatever goes to sleep, gets a series of numbers in his sleep. I'm talking like 18 numbers, right. consecutive numbers. Gets up in the middle of the night, writes them down as like Kathy, his wife. Yeah. We got to go to the auto parts store. 
He types them in, starts the computer up, types them into the computer thinking, I'm probably just crazy. And it literally creates that whole second. It reprograms his computer to do exactly what he wanted it to do. Like, that's impossible. Ah, like. So good. Wow. What? I know. More of that in our businesses. Yeah. Why not? Please. That's the thing that really makes me mad is how much is available. Right. That. You know, one of the things they say is like, whatever you tolerate will dominate. Yeah, whatever th- you think about. Um, so what are we, yeah, I guess it, it, it is a personal invitation to yeah. choose what you want to fill your space, your time. Yeah. I kind of think, especially evening time. <clears throat> hmm so yeah. let's, let's talk practicals. Yeah. What would you, what would you recommend like growing Growing in prophetic dreams, stewarding that atmosphere. Like I've gone to sleep at different times and in times of prolific dreaming, um, I can, I lay down at night and it's like there's a prophetic swirl over top Mm -hmm. of my bed and it's discernible and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to dream tonight. And I know I am. And then, and and I do. It's been a while since I've had that happen, but Like, I believe, like, that's just, it's God's heart to communicate to his kids mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. whether it's, hey, Sherry, I love you, yeah, <laughs> or it's, you know, numbers that solve business problems. Right. What would you say, like, how could we, you know, how could we grow? Um, well, first of all, when you have that prolific season and that swirl, what time yeah. are you, what time do you dream? What's your pattern? Do you have a pattern? In, in the middle of the night? Like, what? yeah. I don't know. I've never really. That's interesting too to think about. Noticed. Mm -hmm. I've, I think it's all different times often. I don't think it's, it's probably after 2 a.m. Yeah. In there. Yeah, that sounds. um, Practicals. I think you mentioned that pizza dream thing Mm. for people who are like, what does that mean? It's kind of a term that's been thrown out there that. Mm. Maybe what you ate that night caused you to dream about that. Or something that happens to me all the time is I will see somebody that day. I will dream about them that night. Now, you could say, oh, you're just dreaming about them because you saw them. And I used to think that, and I didn't believe in the dreams. I didn't Mm. believe that there was value. Mm. But that has all changed for me now because now I regularly do dream about the people I was just with. But it's often very, very cool random words or um, encouragement that I can send them. So I actually see it as God's actually... He's doing that on purpose, um, and I've started to not discredit them, especially what might seem insignificant. Continue to write it down. Mm-hmm. Continue to watch for themes mm. and be bold. And uh, there is a book. Uh, I know they sell it in the Bethel bookstore, and I can't remember the name. The, it's an author. I feel like it's Charity somebody or other. Um, there's a dream on a book on dream interpretation, and okay. my husband dove into it. Um, you could probably put it in the podcast notes when I send it to you. Later. Yeah, yeah. And he dove into it, took all the practicals. It really helped him decipher his dreams. I found wow. the details a little overwhelming because yeah. then I feel a performance thing come over. Like now I have to actually hmm. make everything work. But just from listening to my husband and some of the things he taught me, um, I have noticed a shift in interpretation coming mm-hmm. a little more frequently. And, and easier when it didn't before. So Hmm. I think there's some application we can take ourselves to study it, study dreams. Yes, so good. Like I I could tend to be lazy and just be like, no, I'm good. Me and the Lord are good. But when I did take some time to look at the way, then symbolism happened more in my dreams and I was able to understand the symbolism instead Mm. of just think of it as a literal thing. Wow. Like like I'm in a van going to this school and I'm going to do this. All of a sudden I realized I dream about... I'm in the van all the time. Van is ministry to me. Van is a vessel of ministry. Mm. You know, and I started to see themes of symbolism mm. that God uses in my dream. So a bit of practical application. There's probably a couple of good books that would be great to just read. Right. And then release any feeling of performance of having to understand everything to the Lord. I still yeah, feel like the good. mystery is the most fun. Wow. And write stuff down. Don't yeah. be don't be lazy or, or voice memo it. Do whatever platform works for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, those dreams for other people start to use discretion and and Mm. even just awareness of Mm -hmm. how to deal with that is this a prayer only for Mm -hmm. a wild dream is do you have that do you have um the permission to to speak to someone into someone's life 
I wouldn't share dreams for a long time that weren't encouragement based, Mm -hmm. (laughs) just like good prophetic words. Mm -hmm. They should have fruit in life. Yeah, that's good. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't see unless you were very closely intertwined with a friend, I wouldn't see that there'd be any value in Mm -hmm. bringing them some sort of a a negative word. So, Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And just learn that God does want to have a language with you, and He actually wants to have fun with you. And um, mm. and I think it's okay to to realize that what He, what your dream life looks like, doesn't have to look like anyone else's, and that yep. doesn't make it less profound. Come on. I think the whole point of all of this is the relationship we have with Him in the night. It's not even the That's outcome. That's so it stole the words it's, out of my mouth. Yeah, it's not the outcome, really. No. I just think he's excited to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, it says in Proverbs, like it's the something along the lines of it's the um, honor of kings to search out yeah. mysteries. Yeah. Um, and the Lord, we're priests and kings mm-hmm. before him, um, according to First Peter. And I think um, he wants our dialogue. Yeah. Like Sean Bowles, this is funny. What, listening to him talk about his prophetic dreams or, you know, his stuff. And he's like, God, like, I thank you for speaking to me in parables, but I hate it. I know. He's like, I totally hate it. He's like, just so you know, he's like super real with God. Like, just so you know, like, this is not fun for me. That's my husband. <laughs> really? Yes, Chad will be like, God, seriously. Yeah. Just, really? I mean, it's really not... <laughs> It's oh. so it's just it just goes to show like God I, he just doesn't he doesn't speak English of course he has the capacity to and he talks to us in English mm-hmm. all the time but he speaks in spirit he speaks in parable like that mm-hmm. what a if you read anything in the New Testament yeah. in the Gospels it's Jesus taught in parables and mm-hmm. analogies and would and you know it even says like to us it's been given to know the mysteries. Right. Of the kingdom of God, when the when the disciples came to him and asked him for interpretation, like, "What the heck are you saying? We have no yeah. idea what you're talking about." He says, "It's given to you." Yeah. And I think, I think it being in the Word, I think the Word yeah. is just practically. Mm-hmm. I think the Word is a it's a blueprint for interpretation. Yeah. Like it is. It's a code book, if you will. Like, it's just full. Like, it's it's crazy to me that this is like, it's just a book. Like, it's words on a page, but it's God-breathed and inspired mm-hmm. divinely. And somehow, like, it's a miracle to me that God uses this book. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That it's so full of invitation and um, experience and encounter with him. And mm-hmm. I think... Um, even just like the, the, I think there's a faith element Mm -hmm. to creating, like when you, what you, what you expect is you draw it to yourself. Yeah, totally. Like we're, we're saved by faith through grace. So it's like we access, it says in Romans uh, five, uh, one and two, that we're, we, that we, it's, Faith is our access. Mm-hmm. Faith is our, our access point. All things are apprehended in the kingdom by faith. So I think for me, like I've had frustrating moments, actually, like desiring to dream more, mm-hmm. like wanting to, yeah. like, you know, wanting, wanting more and wanting more interpretation. And honestly, Sherry, like years of like, even times not choosing not to be bitter and angry because I'm like, I'm doing everything right. I feel like I'm really hungry for this. I'm praying for this. Right. But the as I was just processing like, well, what what have I done? And what, you know, what has gone yes. on? It's it's like my faith has been concrete. It's like it's concrete that's set over yeah. time. And now there is um there's there really is consistency in 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 my dream life yeah. like there it's not like it's every night for me like i i want mm-hmm. that for sure but you know every every week every yeah. couple weeks i'll have something significant yeah yeah the only thing i'd add to that too is um and this is not a, an excuse for moms but mm. i mean even especially for um the last few years we went through just a real what felt like a crisis in our family but just a lot it was just a lot and during the day, I would have worship on, or I would probably just just 
was in my prayer language a lot, mm-hmm. but didn't have time to process a whole lot else in my mind with the mm-hmm. Lord. And that was probably when my dream life was the strongest. Yep. I kind of feel like it was just a kiss from heaven. Like God was like, you know what? I realize you don't feel in the day you have space for me or for us. I, I had space for him, but I, I didn't feel like I had space for much more than wow. just believing for hope and declaring as best as I could mm. for it. But he, mm-hmm. he showed up night after night after night. And, you know, I went and now if I look at the last few years and the stories you told me, incredible stories and words you've had for people, opportunities to pray. Mm. And I've had opportunities to pray for people too, but mm. he does use seasons and time. And I do sometimes feel like it's been a real sweet kiss from heaven as a, as a busy mom to mm-hmm. have that nighttime with him. Yeah. And somehow I, I'm rested when I wake up. You know, I remember Bill Johnson joking once, being like, Lord, just let me sleep, you know? Wow. I mean, he was joking, and I, yeah. I, I know that he yeah. appreciated the dreams, but but he has, I have experienced good rest even with mm-hmm. the dreams and seasons, different seasons of totally. life. Totally. So. I think that the one, one thing you said or alluded to at least was just even reading, yeah. reading about people's dreams. Yeah. It like, I don't know, it's something about that that just soaks, soaks the atmosphere. Stewarding what's been given as well as something yeah. you touched on. Like, I don't think God wants to talk to a friend that mm. disregards yeah. when he's speaking. Yeah, or even maybe or shares it all to everyone. That's another I side. I remember him talking to me very specifically. Wow. There was a season where I stopped dreaming for a few months and I came to him and I was like, what, what happened? And he said, I need to know we can have some secrets. And I'm, I wow. have it written down in here when it happened. Wow. I was like, oh shoot, you're right. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah. And I, and I tell, I told him, mm. give me your secrets. I'll keep them. And mm. you know, that doesn't, and sometimes what, we share encouraging dreams yeah. or, I mean, he was talking about other things just that he was like, I need to know that we can have this and you're not mm. going to mm-hmm. just expose it. Mm-hmm. So It's amazing. Yeah. What's your process there? Like, how do you figure out I if mean, you're supposed to say, tell it or not? All that, that's, um, I kind just, of... It's just a discerning, like, sometimes I'll conversation like, with him. A discerning conversation. Sometimes it's pretty black and white. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll be like, hey, my, my good friend here at JC, if she heard me telling somebody this, would she be cool yeah. with that? Like, yeah. I think once, if you've had any healthy prophetic training yep. with prophetic words, which you can certainly read mm-hmm. Chris Valentin's prophetic manual, or, I mean, there's just a handful of good, mm-hmm. um, take that same practice into sharing yep. dreams, share for the encouragement and, and mm-hmm. betterment of others. And if there are dreams where you're bringing a bit of a challenge, mm-hmm. make sure you're you're walking closely enough in that situation with somebody where they would be able to receive it and you in turn would be able to receive their feedback. So Totally. Yeah. And then the rest, you p- you pray and declare. Yeah. You know, what you see over the situation or, or what you see it mm-hmm. becoming. So That's good. Mm-hmm. Sherry Yoder. Yeah. Curtis Roberts. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was awesome. Yeah. I feel like we got somewhere. Fair I nice. feel stirred up. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready to go and dream and get more in that prophetic yeah. river. We should have a three-month touchback on we like, should. Hey, what happened. We should. Uh, we absolutely and should. And from others, too. And from, yeah, and from other people. Um, it, it Like, testimony prophesies. Mm-hmm. You know how it says yeah. in Revelation sure. 19? Testimony of Jesus, this is spirit of prophecy. When you talk about stuff, even like, I think that's a practical thing. Like, for the dreams you're not supposed to share, keep secret, keep them secret. Yeah. But talk about them with the Lord and Talk about your other dreams. Yeah. Like I am, I don't feel like I'm the greatest at interpretation. No, I, I don't. You know what yeah. I mean? But I always ask people to tell me their dreams. Mm-hmm. And I talk about my dreams because when they're they're easily forgotten, even if they're journaled, I'll yeah. like go over them. I want like, I want to keep these things. Mm-hmm. You know, these are experiences and encounters with Jesus yeah. that are life-shaping, life-changing. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's so much goodness and value there. And I think when we, just even conversations like this, atmospheres change. I think even the angelic is stirred and they're drawn, you know, to bring bring more. Yeah. Yes. So thank you. 
You're welcome. This was amazing. Yeah, it was. And I will have you and your husband on soon. That would be fun. Next time. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Sherry. Okay. These lights are so bright on my head. Come on, friend. Thank you. Hello? Now you can dish up all the bad dirt on me of all the times where I came to you with dreams and you were like, shut up, Sherry. <laughs>